Hey guys, it's Emma again. Welcome back to Push the Prod. As you can tell by the title, today I'm going to be talking about how much I made when I was in my entry level IT help desk position. And it was a call center environment, but there were a lot of things that I learned in that position. I have my notes here again because I'm going to be talking a little bit about actually how the position was for me and, you know, my experience there and how I feel like it was a very important role to allow me to get to where I am now. So let's jump right into it. Before I dive in, if you enjoy the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and even share the video. But without further ado, let's jump right into how much I got paid. So I got paid $17.50. I don't know if I'm gonna put it on this side or that side, maybe even both. But I got paid $17.50. If I can find the pay stub from, because it was a few years back, it was a few years ago, um, if I can find the pay stub, I'll put it on so you guys can kind of see the breakdown when it comes to taxes, even though, of course, taxes always change. Um, but, of course, since it was an hourly position, it also had overtime. So you can also see the overtime amount. But, yeah, that that's how much I got paid when I was in the entry-level position. And, of course, it, it may not sound like a lot of money to some people, but for me, I, I was still in college, and it, I was actually living comfortably. I had a brand-new car. Um, to get me to and from campus because I stayed off campus. Of course, I had roommates, so rent wasn't that expensive, but still, I had to pay rent. We had to buy groceries. We had to do a lot of different things, and I was able to live comfortably with that salary. I didn't, at the time, feel like it was a problem. Actually, looking back, it was, it was, I was excited to make that amount. <laughs> I was a college student, and I felt like I was a baller at the time, so I have no complaints about that, but I do want to jump into exactly how the position was. So the first thing I want to jump into though is the hours. I had to work from 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. and the reason of course is I was a full-time student and I was also a full-time employee. I was working 40 hours a week and I was taking some online classes but still most of my courses or most of my classes were on campus so it was like it was hectic at first, but I, I found the balance and it ended up working nicely, uh, especially since I was 2 to 11. Even at work, I felt like it was beneficial because it just gave me more time to actually learn a lot more. So I was able to start going through KBs and KBs are just knowledge articles, knowledge based articles. The, the thing about KBs is you can go, you can kind of see exactly how the write up was by some tech writer. Um, basically telling you how to work through different issues, but then you also could go through previous incidents. Whoever worked it, if they put detailed notes in there, you can learn a lot from the previous incident. So we were going through a lot of those, uh, and so it just made us get better and better. And then not to mention the competition. I worked with a lot of great people. Mars was even on my team back then uh, during the night shift, and we just worked with great people. We had a lot of competition. We made it fun. Who can get the most results? Who had the best times? And it was just, it was a good time. I even had a lead at that time and she was an excellent lead. She was very skilled, very knowledgeable. I would do my due diligence, of course. I would do all the research I could, but when I could not find the solution, I would reach out to her. And if it was something she knew about, she would be able to help easily. But if not, she would be able to come to that solution. She had so much experience, she can get to the bottom of things or just knew who to talk to and all of that. So she was very, very skilled. And she's one of the people I definitely looked up to at the time. She left the lead role and she moved on to software engineering. So I know she's over there still doing great things, but yeah, definitely shout out to her because she was one of the examples that I had for me on how to, you know, be great at what I do. Mars, he was completely different. He would spend no matter how long it took doing the research, he refused to ask anybody. Of course, there were some incidents where you have to escalate to another team because it's their responsibility to take care of it. But when it came to things that <laughs> fell in our umbrella, before he'll escalate it, before he'll reach out to anybody, he would look every single location so if mars came to you you knew that it was probably something that somebody was going to have to go research or a new solution would have to be found but yeah a lot of great experiences there um i could keep going on forever i, I do want to talk about this one thing so there was this guy who created this tool that helped analysts resolve reoccurring issues that were able to be automated and he just automated the fixes. And that just was something that was so cool. And I really wanted to dive in that, dive into that some more. So I created my own tool and it was called Pack-A-Punch. And that's really where I really started automation. I had a software development class when I was in school, but I really didn't have that zeal to go after it because again, it was just learning. It was just schoolwork but where you can actually use what you're learning, that is where I feel like I kind of, I learn best, the environment where I learn best, where I can do something, but it actually is something that's usable. I'm doing it for a reason. 
And so I created this tool called Pack a Punch and trying to match what he did. Of course, it wasn't as it wasn't as good at the time, but as I was doing it more and more, I got better and better at it. And it actually ended up being a really useful tool. It didn't catch on as much as his tool did because I tried to keep it on the low and his tool is still a little bit better but no right now i could definitely create tools and programs that <laughs> will knock both of them out the water but yeah that was back when i was starting and yeah so that was that was one of the things that made me really love automation and it also helped increase again i told you things were very competitive uh it increased the speed in which certain incidents could be resolved so it allowed us to knock out more and more uh incidents so it was it, it was a good time back then it was a great um the management was great which of course great management isn't something you can just find anywhere so i guess i was very lucky to have two great managers it was one for the am shift one for the pm but we were all like still one big family and both of those managers they just cared about all of the analysts all of their employees just getting better and just advancing moving on to better things so the support was very great there so that's something that you know i feel was it was an incredible it helped make it an incredible experience and not to mention the work itself so of course it was an entry level it position so we did the normal things like oh my password i can't sign in uh, this website isn't working anymore internet's down my computer won't turn on the monitor's bad so of course the, all of those things that we could resolve we I, I learned those skills but also um anything that had to be escalated being in a position like that you're kind of like the middleman so let's say someone was interested in software development, you will get an issue because we had an in-house application. Let's say the development team pushed something to pr production, push the prod. <laughs> Let's say they push something to production and now there's new bugs that were introduced to the environment. And so we have the different sites calling in saying, hey, this, this, is, this, this and this is going on. We reach back out to the developers and we start saying, hey, so you kind of see that process. Same thing with networking. Um, let's say a site goes down and they no longer have internet connectivity and then it's nothing that we can resolve but based on our tool set and our knowledge set we have to reach out to the network engineers and then you kind of see what they're kind of the, the way they work through things because again you're still that middleman between them and the end user so you you get to see all the different things even with security let's say they got malware on their computer um and it's wormable and it starts spreading so now you can talk to the security team see what they want you to hey shut down those computers have them um disconnected send them in and you know so you're kind of seeing what's going on and how different processes are handled whereas right now i'm of course in the, on the security team but i'm dealing with everything that surrounds security of course sometimes we talk with to networking we talk to software developers but I feel like it's not the same when it comes to, you know, the business or how it affects the business directly. Uh, even though it can, I don't want to get too confusing in how it can and can't, but, uh, or confuse myself rather. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I felt like it was definitely a great place to start. So as you can tell, I definitely feel like the experience that you get from an entry level help desk position is irreplaceable because again there's just so much things to learn and then you can kind of see where you want to go so i definitely recommend it if, if it's something that's possible or if you kind of were if you kind of were straying away from an entry level help desk position of any kind um even desktop support where it's more physical or any type of entry level it position there's there's just so many things you can learn and i guess the same thing can be said for any position but again this is just my experience and it's something that again i feel was irreplaceable i learned a lot it was a great experience anyway i hope you enjoyed the video uh, i hope you learned something i hope there's something you learned that can you can share with somebody make sure you guys like comment and subscribe share the video this was a quick one we have some more good content coming for you uh some similar content too so be on the lookout for that make sure you guys hit the notification bell other than that thanks for watching